3D printing does a lot of things well, but one of the things for me that I like most is it helps me get organized. Hello everyone, Chris here. I hope you're all well. I do come from the Midwest and it's starting to get warm outside, so I'm starting to move into other areas of the home, starting to do some projects here and there. And one of the biggest areas for me is the garage. Now, if you are a garage type person and you have a toolbox, a lot of times it's really hard to keep it organized, especially when you're directly working out of it. A lot of things get put in there that probably shouldn't be, and that's one of my biggest issues. I've been working out of the same toolbox for over 20 years, and it's a bit of a mess. But one drawer that I wanted to focus on mostly is the socket drawer, because that's where I dig most things out. I do work on cars from time to time, I have to work out of this one drawer, and it is a complete wreck. So that's the issue I wanted to solve today. And here we are in the garage. Now this isn't the first time that we've made videos in the garage. We actually had the hang printer up here for a while. But this is the toolbox problem that we're dealing with. Mainly this drawer right here. Because it's at about belt buckle height, I always work out of it. It ends up with a bunch of stuff in here and garbage that shouldn't be in here at all. So we need to change that. So here's a look at what we're dealing with, including all the stuff up here at top that I've tried to organize, stuff down here on the table. There's a whole bunch of missing sockets, and you can see I only have one of these trays for standard. I used to have one for metric, but I'm pretty sure it might have gotten ran over years ago. I don't recall, but it's gone either way. Also, I have a bunch of impact sockets, and I've tried to use these rails with magnets on the back to just kind of throw some of the extra stuff I don't use on the side of the box. So we'll see if that works out. But mainly, I need to get all of these sockets and everything back in the drawer and somewhat organized. And that's when I decided to reproduce one of those socket holders and I came up with this. And here's a look at what I created. And you can't go around here and see a 3D print without having just a little bit of Benchy in it. But basically all I did was try to recreate one of those trays. I am missing a few of those sockets, so I didn't know exactly how many went in here. I just took a really good guess, and I think I got it pretty close. But you've got quarter inch deep wells, three eighths deep wells, some half inch. Basically, I just measured every socket I could find and tried to trend it with its own hole so we'd have enough places for everything. And on the back, depending on the depth of the socket, I just added a box through the back, I did a through hole, and then I covered it up one by one to get the correct height. So all of the sockets should fit in here and be about 10 millimeters off the top. And if we take a look at it in Fusion, it's a pretty simple design. Like I said, pretty much just drew a square. I think I measured it with my tape measure in standard around nine and a half by 10 inches, converted it to metric, and then just drew the square out and started extruding some holes. Again, I just measured those sockets one by one. And the end product, I say, came out pretty well, more than functional. I thought drawing it during this video might take up a little bit too much time, but we're not done yet. And there's our new organizer in place. That is already a great start. I didn't know that I was missing so many of these quarter inch deep wells. Well, the deep wells all together. But at least I know now what is missing, so I can target either finding them or replacing them. Now, it's still a wreck. I did end up with all of these half inch rails. That would be good for our impact sockets. Again, magnet to the side of the box, do something like that. So that will be helpful. But also this miscellaneous stuff. I've got this spare rail here that I like to use to take out to the car or whatever. These are a lot of the ones that I've had to replace over the years, but it's a nice short rail. You don't have to take everything with you. And I'd like a lot of this to have its own compartment, like an inch and an eighth. I don't use that very often. Things for spark plugs. Don't use it very often, but get it in here so it doesn't roll around, roll underneath the trays, and I can't find it. So that's the problem I want to tackle next. So having that extra space up there in the front of the drawer, that's going to be nice for all the little odds and ends that don't go in these trays. But dealing with sockets, a lot of them like to roll around in the drawer, they go underneath. It'd be a lot easier if we had some sort of holder up front, we could put stuff in so they'll stay put. And again, 3D printing to the rescue. Now, it would be really easy just to 3D print a couple of smaller bins to line up in there, but if you had a printer of size, you could print one large one all at once, and that's what I set out to do. 
So we jump back to fusion, this one should be a pretty easy one to get knocked out. Remember, I'm not showing you how to use all the ins and outs of Fusion 360. I'm just showing a quick and dirty way to make useful parts that you can use in your other projects. So after some quick measurements on the drawer in the X, I ended up with 558 millimeters and our Y is 76 millimeters. So we're just going to start with a square or rectangle actually. 558 by 76. So that will be our max size for the drawer. That's actually kind of pushing it, but I think we can slide it in there. So let's go ahead and finish that. And we just want to create some walls. The easiest way to create walls for me is just to use the offset tool. So you can hit O, click on the outline, and you'll see it blue there. And we're just going to set it in. Let's make these outside walls just a little bit thicker. Let's go five millimeters on those. So we're looking good. We can go ahead and finish that sketch. Let's extrude the bottom plate here. Let's make it five so it's a little extra sturdy. Once you extrude, it usually turns off your sketch. You can turn it back on over here on the left. But then we'll grab that offset. And let's extrude it up to make our external wall. And 80 millimeters should fit in that drawer height-wise nicely. Now, as I said before, it would be nice to have a couple of different compartments in here. That wouldn't be hard to make at all, but I've got that smaller socket rail. That's kind of my go-to. It has all of the most common sizes I use. In the trays, I've actually got some missing ones that I've replaced with these cheaper sockets, but I want to have a place that I can grab that quickly, but that rail is kind of long. That rail ended up being around 210 millimeters long, so again, just real quickly, I'm going to grab another sketch here. This time, I'm going to draw on top of this part. It makes it a little less confusing for me, and again, it's quick. So we'll just select this to draw our sketch on top. And I just want that rail to be on the center of my part, and clicking on the top of this part like we did should make it easy to find center. So if you just hover over the edge of your part, you'll get down to the center and you'll see a triangle. That marks the center. And then you can drag that out after it's grabbed it, and you can find the center in the other direction. You can see it marked it for you there with a triangle. And then just go ahead and go on down. And then now you've found the center. So you can click there to start your rectangle and then start pulling it out. Really the only thing we need to be worried about is how wide we want it. Again, that was 210 millimeters. And then as far as the other direction, I'm just gonna pull it into the part so it is tall enough or wide enough. So that should be good. We'll just finish. And the quickest way for me to make some walls here, again, is to use that offset tool. So I'm going to do O, grab our new rectangle here, just make sure it's highlighted blue, like that. And let's just make this one three millimeters. It doesn't have to really be strong. It just has to keep them from going anywhere. So we'll finish that sketch. And now we can just extrude the parts that we want because this sketch is actually defined, it's confined by this other part. So we'll extrude, I'll just spin it around a little bit so you can see it, and just select the ones that you want. So we just want this one and this one over here. And then just a little trick I like to do is to turn the sketches off so that I can see the actual body and the extrude amount, I'm just gonna click on the bottom of our tray. That'll take our walls down 75 millimeters, that'll join them, and we'll hit OK. And a super basic design, but this is gonna do everything that I wanted to do in that socket drawer. From here, again, you could just break it up into other trays, smaller trays, if you have a smaller printer. Just snap a line through there and cut it, but if you have a really long printer, go for it. This one, we're going to be setting it up on the Foldercheck FT6. And you all know that I can't resist a good time lapse, but this one I threw in a little extra footage.
And here is our finished part. Turns out printed solid red is pretty close to Craftsman red. So it was a nice fit. But this should fit right up here in the front. It's going to be snug because we made it as big as we possibly could. But it's a pretty nice fit in that drawer. Now that center section, again, it's going to give me room for my rail as well as a few other things. Things like my universal, I don't use very often, my larger sockets. At least now they can stand up in this tray so that I can see what they are. One inch extensions. And then on the other side, maybe we do like quarter inch and three eighths stuff that I don't have a spot for. That drawer is just so much cleaner. I really liked how this turned out and it was a really simple 3D printed part we just printed it really big. So there we go. Our socket drawer is looking better than it ever has. Another mild irritation that was solved with 3D printing. And I have a lot of other projects around the house that 3D printing could probably step in and help out a lot, including a lot more toolbox drawers. But those are projects for another day. That will be it for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you really soon on the next one. Next we tackle the drill bit drawer.